five mistakes that I made in property that I don't want you to make. But once I give you all five, I have a cool little summary that's gonna blow your mind and make you millions. Some people think this is crazy, but I genuinely, I want you to do better than I did. And when I started out investing in property using my construction knowledge, I built a portfolio of over four and a half million using zero my own money in 18 months. And since then, I have taught many people to do it bigger and faster than me. And that's what I want for you. So to do that, you've got to avoid these five. In my entire career in property and construction, I've been involved in over 50 million pounds worth of projects. That's not even including my portfolio that I have built. I'm talking about build projects, which leads me to the first one. This is absolutely key. Trying to get the build, you know, like the construction, the work for cheap. You get what you pay for in this life. Trust me, in my early days, I was getting cheap bills and it was great. It was looking good on the refinances, you know, the money was coming out and all the rest of it. But look, one year in, two years in, three years in, sometimes I was redoing whole places. Damp was coming through. Things were leaking. Things were letting us down, which then I had to spend thousands, some 5,000, some even close to 10,000 pounds on it. It. Yeah, and it's more disruption. Loss of rent now is what's being occur uh, incurred as well. Cheap today does not mean cheap tomorrow. You've got to consider this. You've got to get good quality products, kitchens and the bathrooms and the carpets and the underlay, all of that stuff. Get it good quality, build it so it lasts. You want to make money forever, not just a quick book. That's what getting it cheap does, just gets you a quick book now. Number two, management teams. Once you get the projects done, they've got to be managed, right, by someone, either yourself, and I've done other videos about doing it yourself, or having management agents. But you have a management agent and team, you've got to vet them properly. A big mistake that I had, we just had a conversation, we said, yeah, and we just threw everything at them. So there was like five units, six units here, seven units, you know, another 10 units here, 20 units, here and we were just giving them all, expecting them to be able to deal with it. And we didn't do the due diligence on where they're capable. That was a big, big mistake. I don't want you to make that mistake. Do the due diligence, give it to them slowly, interview them, see how many rooms they have, how many properties they have, and how many people they have per number of properties, manage it. Some people, they don't like to answer that. What does that tell you? They've probably not got the right systems and processes in place if they don't want to tell you this information. That leads me nicely onto the next one, which is number three. Do not make all the freaking changes at the same time, because this is what I did. I made a big, massive mess. You know, this uh, one agent, I don't like, basically near enough all of the properties, and then I was like, right, that's it, bang, and I moved them all over to someone else. What do you think happened there then? Again, they became overwhelmed as well, plus I didn't test them out and I didn't vet them properly. So what you gotta do is make changes in stages. See how they perform. Let's see that they can deliver what they said they were gonna deliver and they can do what they said they were gonna do and give them some problems to deal with. Yeah, give them some problem properties. Let's see how they respond. Do they like it? Do they work for the business? Do they really wanna be a partner with you? So make changes in stages. Yeah, number four, and don't forget, you gotta wait for a summary because it's gonna blow your mind on how much money you can really make, but this one, is the profit and loss. Most people, they procrastinate all day long before they get into a deal working numbers out. And all of a sudden, they start the project, they've got no running cash flow balance of project, and especially when then it starts renting out, they're just keeping track of the numbers, they've just gone out the window. So they've got no profit and loss. You say, what's the profit and loss? Oh, well, uh, uh, uh. And people don't know. Look, you've got to track the income as it's coming in. What is the cost of the sale? What is the cost of the delivery, the management fees? What is the expenses, bills, and, and all these things going out to give you your net cash flow. This is so key that you've got to understand these numbers or at least have someone in your freaking team who understands it. You know, Richard Branson himself was in an interview. I was in a board meeting when I was about 50 years old. I think I said, is that good news or bad news? And, and one of the directors said, come, come outside, Richard, a minute. So came outside and he said, you don't know the difference between net and gross, do you? So I said, no. He said, I thought not. Anyway, I brought a sheet of paper. He has some color pens and he, he colors it in blue and then he puts a fishing net in the in it and then he puts a little fish in the fishing net and he says um, so the fish that are in the net that's your profit at the end of the year and the rest of the ocean that's your gross turnover and um, I went I've got it ever since then I've been name dropping net and gross to people who obviously know full, full well what it is
You've got to have someone, whether it's you or someone's got to be accountable to knowing the numbers and being able to report on it regularly. So you don't start going into arrears, yeah? So the people that you don't go into arrears and then all of a sudden they just do one and then, you know, it costs you more money to freaking chase them than what they owe you. Now, oh my God, number five. This is a game changer and this is a silent one. This is an, a silent assassin that will take you out if you don't pay attention to it. And that is this mistake, which is taking your foot off the gas when you start winning. What do I mean by that? I mean, when you get in all the deals, you got more deals than you know what to do with. Uh, you've been doing your marketing, you've been reaching out to people, you've got investors, people wanting to invest, they've seen your, all of your activity. Projects are happening, things are coming in, and then what does someone do? Oh my goodness, they go take a vacation, they take their foot off the gas, they say, yeah, all is good in the hood. No. Don't do that, this is a big mistake. Why? Because it's like where that story about pumping the well that brings the water up. It took time, it took effort, it took energy, it took money to get this flowing. Now it's flowing, you're gonna stop pumping? No, 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 the water's gonna start going down. As you've got this momentum, do not take your foot off the gas, put it on the gas, but it, with a different nuance. What you wanna do now is put your foot on the gas on how do I systemize this? Now I've got it flowing, I've got deals coming in, I've got investment. I'm recycling, I'm getting cash flow, deals are working. How do I now partner with people, bring people in, hire them to actually carry on this business, generating the income and they get their little fair share of it as well. Uh, rather than take my foot off the gas because trust me, one day you're gonna be like, oh, where's my pipeline, where's my deals, oh my, by my God, I'm not making any money. Yeah, so just because you've got cash money's in the bank, that doesn't mean that everything's okay. Go back to step four, which is P&L, you've got to know what's happening, cash flows, forecast, these type of things. But number five, oh my God, do not take your foot off the gas. Here's the bonus, if you waited this long, this is now the real deal. After you don't make all of these mistakes, these five mistakes that I just talked about, you've got to get tax efficient. This is actually an income stream in itself. Let's say you're gonna re start receiving tax bills of 100,000. If I can now, purely ethically and 100% legally use government incentives, government incentives, mwah, yeah? To reduce that 100,000 to freaking zero, basically I just made 100,000 on top of everything else. In fact, one project that I'm doing right now, before I even rent it out, before I refinance it, I already made 125,000 pounds through using government incentives to be able to get tax relief in numerous different ways. So like 125K, I even started renting it out yet. How cool is that? So you gotta make sure that you take advantage of these things as well and you know based on each strategy, each product, each service, each area. In fact, I just had someone who came to our two-day program. In one of the exercises, we raised money. We raised a half a million pounds in 15 minutes. Yeah, just 15 minutes, just with a few people. And one of them, you know the money they raised? Was literally free money. It was a grant that they don't even have to freaking pay back. Yeah, that's how we roll in this ship. By the way, all of these results that you might see online, you know, from myself, from all the people in the Real Life Tribe, that is the difference between being a property investor and being broke versus being a property entrepreneur and making real money, but also living your real life, doing what you love doing. So until next time, do the right thing for the right reason. It's the only way you discover your true potential.